Welcome dear teachers to my session on fostering school parent and community partnerships. My name is Russell D'Souza and I come from Nirmala Institute of Education that is a college of teacher education in Goa. So let us look at the outline first. So if you look very carefully we have a brief description of terms namely the community, school and parents. And the second one is the relationship between community, school and parents with respect to education and fostering community, school and parent partnerships. Let us look at uh, these three terms very carefully. They are briefly described. So the three terms are community, school and parents. So when we look at a community, we need to understand what's the meaning of a community. And so when I say a community, it is a small or a large social unit which has something common such as territory. So when I say territory, that could be a place that is situated in a given geographical area, for example, a village, a town or a neighborhood, language. We know that language binds community and what is all the most surprising is that we have despite so many dialects being there, we still have the community that remains intact. So language is a binding factor. Every community has certain customs, it has traditions, it has norms, beliefs and values. Occupation and identity which is a very important factor of communities. So when I look at occupations, there could be occupations could be of different kinds. For example, you have farming as an, as an occupation, you have artisans and so on. And all these community members, they share some common facilities. For example, uh, a school, a place of worship. It could be health and even social amenities. So this is the definition of a community. Let's look at a school. Now learners, you need to remember and understand that a school is a formal institution that is created by the community to provide learning space and a learning environment for the teaching of its young citizens. So in other words, it is a formal institution of learning. And children who are a part of school are known as pupils. So school is a place that is designated for teaching and learning in a community. Remember I said it is a formal institution of learning. Now the people engaged in this activity are teachers, school staff and students. So students, they learn under the guidance or the supervision of teachers. And the courses of study are prescribed by competent agencies of education. If you look at uh, a state for example, so you will have the State Council of Educational Research and Training and then you will have the state board and so on. Let's come to the, the third component and the third component which is a very important component and that is a parent. So a parent is basically a caregiver of the offspring in that in their own species. So in humans a parent is the caretaker of a child where child refers to an offspring. Now what is the interrelationship between the community, school and parents with respect to education. We need to understand the interrelationship so that we can understand how we can foster a relationship between these three components in the system. I want you to look very carefully at, uh, at this particular visual. You see three components. So which are the three components that are visible in here? One is the community, the second component is the parents and the third component which is there is the school. So the community, the school and the parents are the three important components and each has their own responsibility, each has its own significance, each has its own status in the whole encounter of learning. So let us look at each of these components and their interrelationships and how we can foster these interrelationships one by one. 
So what is the responsibility of the community towards the school and parents? Is there a responsibility? What is the nature of the responsibility? What is the extent to which the community is responsible to parents and the school? So let's have a look at it. So responsibility of the community towards the parents. So the very first responsibility is to create an awareness and impress on parents about the need for children to be schooled. There is an urgent need for every single child to be schooled irrespective of his denomination. So, teachers or the community has to schedule a variety of community events and informal gatherings with parents and this would help to increase enrollment. In other words, you could have community fairs in which parents are exposed to different benefits of education, street plays that impress on how education helps to uplift society, films to be screened for them through sports and through games. So this means that the community has to play a very active role in making the parents understand that yes, education is very important for all of us and for the child in particular because the future of the country depends on every generation that comes up. So you have to remember to your teachers here at this point of time that persons external to the community may also be needed to enlighten parents and also people from within the community. The second component is to encourage parents to keep in touch with teachers at school so as to know the progress that the learner is making, not forgetting the emergent needs of the learners. So what does this mean? It means the parent has to be in touch with the teachers at the school to know the progress. So the community has to enlighten teachers that yes, you have to liaise with the school. The third one is encourage parents to team with teachers teaching in class and out of class. This will help to build a bond of trust between the parents and the school. And this will also help parents and teachers to realize that teaching and learning is not the responsibility only of teachers or of parents, but it is a joint responsibility of both the parents and the teachers. So who is going to do this? The community has to encourage parents and parents have to realize that this is very important. Encourage parents to be actively associated with the village education committees and school management committees. So being a parent and sending your child to school is one thing but you need to be an active person being a contributor as far as the village education committees is concerned and the school management is concerned. Because as parents, you also have needs. The community has needs. And so these needs have to be brought to the forefront. Sensitize and conscientize parents about resources in the community. Community has a lot of resources and the community has to sensitize that these are the different resources that the community has got. It could be physical resources, it could be human resources, it could be just anything. Now, the community literacy or learning centers to enhance or build new skills in parents and in relation to parenting. Today, we talk a lot about parenting skills. And so, community has to talk about all these important skills because the child of yesterday is not the child of today and the child of today is not going to be the same tomorrow. In other words, we love to say that the student had changed, the learner had changed. But have we as parents changed? Have we as teachers changed? That's a question for us. So the community has to encourage parents and expose them to how parenting is supposed to happen. Ensure incentives to children, especially the girl child 
and the disadvantaged learners. This would increase retention and also attract those learners towards school. Now, a community has resources, it has financial resources and so the community can make use of these financial resources that it has to better schools. We can, as a corporate social responsibility or CSR, donate maybe books, uniforms, writing materials, reading materials to school. Probably you can even have maybe a school room that is constructed or maybe a roof that is blown off could be repaired. Maybe a safe drinking water, provision of safe drinking water, maybe a playground. Then also monitor the quality of the midday meal as parents are very much concerned about midday meals. And particularly to cite an example in Goa, the community is very much associated with uh, these self-help groups so that children get a nutritious meal. What is the responsibility of community towards the school? Now we know that the VECs or the village education committees are suitably constituted and ensure their participation in smooth functioning of the school. The VECs are created by the village council and therefore the community has a very large role to ensure that the VECs are suitably constituted. We want to have progressive people in the VECs who will make a significant contribution towards the growth of the school and the community. The second one is to offer technical expertise to the village education committees. That is to create the school development plan. Creation of the school development plan is a very important exercise of the village education committee. And so the community can offer support in creating a school development plan. Number two is monitor civil and development works. We want something to be done and something that should be strong and something that should be last because we have public money that goes into construction and development. So monitoring is very important and community monitoring is an excellent thing to happen. To also construct a village education plan. A village education plan that maps the whole village, that tells you what is the present status, what are its needs and where the community wants to be. So that means we have a progressive map right before us. So here is another responsibility of the community towards the school. To closely monitor school management as well as teacher performance, community has to do it. Monitoring the school management and teacher performance. Uh, work towards the assurance of 100% completion of elementary education of all children. So all children should complete elementary education successfully. Monitor also the academic performance of children on formative test, summative test. Where are they going? What are they doing? What is the enhancement as far as cognition is concerned? Also the attendance and quality of education. That means the community has a very large responsibility when it comes to the parents and also the school. Ensure that the school management committee is transparent and also practices inclusion of parents or guardians of children belonging to the disadvantaged groups or the weaker section of what we call the underprivileged section of society. The community can also engage itself by providing safe drinking water, toilets separate for boys and girls. And now when we have children with disabilities and particularly children who, have, who are physically challenged, they need a proper sitting arrangement. They need ramps. They may need a wheelchair. So, so the support from the community has to come because if the community doesn't support then how do we expect education to, to prosper and, and, and in, enhance the life of people in the community. Monitor the use of financial and other vital resources of the school. Make available resources from the community such as human resources, uh, village libraries and playgrounds, uh, parks or recreation facilities, qualified human resource, etc. 
when and where to start new schools is another responsibility of the community. Is there a need for a school? Where and when? Induct teachers and nurture them. Today, capacity building of teachers is extremely important. As I made a mention a while ago, I said that a learner had changed tremendously. But has a teacher changed? I leave this question before you because you are practicing teachers. But you have to remember that the community has a very important role to bring in new teachers, that is to induct teachers and to nurture them, to develop them. Let's look at the second one. What is the responsibility of parents towards the school and community? Do parents have a responsibility towards the school and community? Yes, they do have to play a very, very important and significant role. So, what is the responsibility of parents towards the school? As parents, we need to create a positive attitude at home about school and the importance of education. We cannot be talking negative about schooling and about education. You cannot be telling your son or your daughter, look at your neighbor's son or daughter who without education is doing so well in life. Or maybe a friend of yours whose son is doing so well in life without going to school. Remember, we need, we need education. And education is different from literacy. We need to have an educated citizenry. And therefore, as parents, we need to create a situation at home which shows that education is important for you. Because being educated means education spreads to all. The second one is keeping an open channel of communication with the child's teachers and the principal. So as parents, you are supposed to be maintaining a channel of communication that is totally open with the teachers and the principal. Remember that the schools are working for us and we work for schools. Teaching children to respect and display good manners towards teachers are the staff and the principal. Today, our value system has deteriorated a lot. And in this situation, we need to get to our child to teach them to respect teachers, respect the principal and all elders in the institution or the school. As parents, it is also our responsibility to ensure that the children get proper rest and nutrition so that they are able to function effectively in school. Good food, that is nutritious, and sleep. These two things are very important if you want your child to be an active learner. Be aware of the child's performance at school and openness to a mutual sharing of concern. Suggest or demonstrate ways to enhance the cognitive, the affective dimension and also the performance dimension of the students at school. So as parents, we have so many ideas. We are exposed to so many new things. Technology has exposed us to a plethora of new ideas. Why don't we share these ideas, our thoughts with teachers and schools so that the teachers can enhance the abilities of our children. As parents, we can, they can offer specialized service to the school by way of counseling. So if we have uh, qualified counselors as parents, then yes, why not offer these professional services to the schools? What is the responsibility of parents towards the community? Encouraging active leadership of the child in the community by way of displaying appropriate behavior, being responsible and dependable to tasks in the community. In other words, there should be a lot of social responsibility. So, our schools, the children, and what children learn in school should be put into practice in the world around them. To live as a citizen, what is your civic responsibility? It is so surprising and strange that today we talk about everything, but we forget about civic responsibility. I nicely put my garbage in a nice 
plastic polythene bag and I throw it into my neighbor's compound or I throw it all along the highway or maybe in some other places. Is this civic responsibility? No. So as parents, we need to get our children to understand that this is not a good thing. Encourage children to know and understand the problems that the community faces and how they can show solidarity with the community. Also, to display ability to uphold their duties and rights as citizens. We look at the next relationship and this is concerned with what is the responsibility of school towards the parents and community. So what is the responsibility of the school towards the parents and the community. Yes, it has a very, very big responsibility. So let us look at the responsibility. So the first one is to help children to acquire 21st century skills. Today we are, we are in the 21st century and schools should equip children with 21st century skills. That is to help them to work with others. That is in collaboration developing creativity and imagination in children, information literacy, to enhance their oral and written skills, to develop in them a civic sense so that they are equipped to creatively problem solve and live wholesome lives in the community. The next one is inculcate values of patriotism, love, respect, affection, loyalty for your country, integrity, oneness, inclusiveness, irrespective of who you are and what you are. You may be the elite, you may be a middle class, you may be belonging to you know, the, the low class community, that's not our concern. We want an inclusive community because the moment we look at inclusiveness, we see progress. Socialize children, let the children learn to have a personal identity of who they are, what they are and children should also have the knowledge, the language and the social skills required to interact with all others in the community. The transmission of social norms, values and traditions. The school has a very important responsibility here to transmit the good things of the community to the generations that are coming up. Then. Schools should clearly inform parents what their children learn, how they are learning, what they are taught, what they have acquired, what they have failed to acquire, how they are assessed, when they are assessed. Parents are informed about the social, moral and emotional progress of their children and this is very important. Having said all this, we must know that schools do face a variety of difficulties. This could be in its own internal sustenance and power struggles, lack of support from the community of which it is a part and from parents too. Sometimes schools are unable to harness the various community resources though available because of blocks and impediments. So this disturbs the delicate balance thereby damaging the education mission. So binding between the community parents and schools is possible if we let it happen. So, summing up the whole presentation, we need to understand that there is a close linkage between the parents, school and the community. The community makes a contribution towards parents and the school. The parents make a contribution towards the school and the community and the school makes a contribution towards the parents and the community. Each one in turn maintains and sustains and nurtures the other. They cannot work independently of the other. Thank you.